Hollywood. It's the Tom Micah Show. Oh, my God. Oh, here I go. Oh. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio doing something we, we rarely do, and that is to talk about the same subject or go after the same theme for four whole hours or more. I mean, we just do the whole show this way. Three if you're in Dallas, you know, five if you're in L.A. I mean, the whole show is about this one topic. Because a woman named Kay Heimowitz, the contributing editor of a publication called City Journal, wrote a piece called Child Man of the Promised Land. The subtitle, Today's Single Young Men Hang Out in a Hormonal Limbo Between Adolescence and Adulthood. And if you read the piece... She's clearly talking about the kind of people who listen to our show. People who believe what I believe. And um, you can read the article yourself if you go to our website, blowmeuptom.com. It's linked there. But uh, essentially, uh, to, it's almost impossible to boil this down to one thought, but essentially she's saying that uh, men are extending their adolescence into their 30s, Women are having a hard time finding good guys to marry, and it's our fault because we uh, refuse to grow up. We continue to want to play Xbox and watch porn and hang out with our buddies and get drunk, and uh, it's time for us to grow up. That's what she's saying. Your telephone calls here are welcome, and now it's just you and me because Kay had to go. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. 1-800-5800-866. And again, it's just you and me here. Uh, Kay had to go. Let's say hello here to uh, Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. I'm glad to be on with you again. Uh, I just wanted to bring up the point about her statistics. I didn't hear a single uh, where she get her stats from. Well, you have to read the piece. And there are stats, and she does quote them. And, and by the way, I don't disagree with her statistics. I don't yeah, just, yeah, I just what I disagree I, with is the way she interprets the statistics. Yeah, exactly. Because you know, and I'm, I was, uh, you know, I'm going to college and everything, and I was doing a you know report on you uh, quite a few months ago, and uh, we were going up about marriage and a downfall of marriage. It had to do with the uh, rise of women rights. Around the time women were pushing for equal rights and right. all that kind of stuff, the downfall of marriage came. Right. Keep in mind, no it was longer. feminists. It was feminists who pushed for no-fault divorce. Exactly. And uh, the reason for that was because they didn't want to lose their alimony just because they banged somebody else. Exactly. And I know, uh, there, you know, I'm also in the military, and I was uh, wondering if, if there's some day uh, we can schedule, maybe uh, you can do a special edition for military. Well, I certainly think that our military men uh, get themselves into lots of trouble. By getting married too young, having babies too young, there are female vultures out there who want to get their talons into your benefits. All your, um, all the health benefits, the education benefits, retirement benefits. And uh, I think a lot of our young men need, uh, need a little more information about that, need some education. So anything is possible, I tell you that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. This is Alex. I just said that. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, there's a lot of wind coming in over here, and it's throwing up a lot of my reception. I get, I get, if I get cut off, it would be the wind, you know? <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> 
Go ahead, Alex. Uh, yeah, well, like I said, uh, um... Go ahead. I, I can't hear you. Alex? Yeah, um, okay, well, uh... It's a little windy in here. I just wanted to say that if, if I do get cut off... Somebody left the window open. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, let me just get some, uh, Yes, sir. Um, I've only been listening for the past five or six months or so. I haven't been, you know, the longest listener. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I constantly tune in just to, uh, you know, talk about it. Right. All right, well, you know, you have the, uh, the author on there. I'm sorry? And the author of the, the article. Oh, the author of the article, yes. I'm going to put my collar up here. Wait a second. Okay, go ahead. All right, cool. Anyway, yeah, she was just talking a lot about... Uh... I shouldn't have brought up this when you're right. <laughs> Maybe not. This is a lesson to the audience. Just get to the point. Don't start talking about your problems, because this is what we do. No, oh, okay. I'll, yeah, I'll get right. We to multiply the your problems. Yes, get right to the point. To the point. Yeah, she was saying she was talking about identifying with. Uh, she was talking about having meaning and you know having meaning through family, through child, through marriage, through women, and through relationships. You know, and uh, as a sociology major, I've looked into that sort of stuff, and I do find that to be the case. I'm calling in for my opinion, and this would be my Well, Well, you're, you're then saying that people like me who are not married don't have children, don't have meaning to our lives. Are you kidding? No, I am no. I mean, it's one thing to say, you know, that's what I want to do, and it's another thing to say you should do it, too, you know? Um, I mean, that's, I that's the way you think you're, that's the way you think you're going to find meaning to your life, and that I, if your life means nothing and you need to find it through other people, find meaning, then I guess that's what you have to do. I, I find my life incredibly meaningful. Well, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you're kind of jumping on me that I'm saying you don't find any meaning or you should find it my way. I'm just, uh, you know, trying to give my opinion and give my perspective. Well, you're saying that you studied sociology and you found this to be true. You're not saying it's, it's true for you. You're saying you found this to be true through your study, oh. somehow oh. implying that you, you've got some kind of information the rest of us don't have. And by looking into the material, you've discovered that th this is what people need. Uh, well, uh for one thing I've studied and then I've come across is that that is seem to be the case for the most part, not for everybody. No, for you. Uh, we are, I do agree. I do agree. And yeah, of course. That's the case that. for you. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't. And I, I don't happen to believe that. that's because you, you yourself don't find enough meaning in your own life. So you need other people to find meaning. Well, I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, you're drinking with a friend. At the end of the day, you're visiting your mom. At the end of the day, you know... You're relating to other people, uh, it's, right? It's but you don't. Th do. So, but 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 that's a big leap from from having a beer with a friend at the end of the day, uh, to signing a contract and agreeing that you'll only have sex with one person, and that if it doesn't work out, you'll pay them a lot of money. Oh, sure. I mean, I'm not saying the the system isn't somewhat corrupt. Well, that you need to have babies. I mean, I, I'm going to spend the weekend uh, this weekend. I'm going to visit my my nephew. I right. promised him for his birthday I'm going to take him to um, a game, and I'm going to do that on Saturday. Uh -huh. um, and I'm going to love every minute of it. Sure. And then when I'm done uh, going to the game with him, uh, I'm going to head back from the airport in the middle of next week, and he's going to hug me and he's going to say, I love you, Uncle Tom, I'll miss you, and I'm going to tell him that I love him and I'm going to miss him too, and I'm going to get back on the plane. Right. And I'm not going to have any of the expense or the responsibility that my brother has. Right. So I am going to get all of the meaning, all of the enjoyment, all of the uh, uh, joy of being with a child totally. without yeah. having any of the obligation. Sure. So, so you see, you can, you can relate to people without having to actually sign contracts and, and to give them money. No, definitely. What I'm trying to say is that, that that situation existed to begin with, these relationships, and then came the contracts, and then came, you know, the obligation, and then came uh, what we have now, which is what you don't agree with, which is uh, 
marriage, signing a paper and giving her half the money when you're out of there and you want to be out of there. Which um, the almost half of everybody who gets married ends up leaving, and then the guys yeah. end up having to pay. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree with that at all. So since um, that's the way it is. I find my way to relate to kids, uh, whether it be the time I taught a, a junior achievement class in an inner city high school or spending time with my nephew or, uh, speaking of family, spending time with my brother and his wife. Great. Right. And then when we're done, we get out of each other's hair. Sure. I don't think you need to live at the same address as somebody seven days a week, 24 hours a day to find meaning in life. I mean, this is where it kind of gets fractured, you know. And I don't um, think it makes somebody an adolescent. No, I, I don't know. I don't agree. I'm not even married myself. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about it and I want to do it, but I'm not thinking that anybody that doesn't do it has left. Why is that important to you to do? Well, aside, like I said, I've been. I, I'll tell you why. Your parents are nagging you about this. They're too. They're well, not, not at all. My parents are actually going through a divorce now. Ah. And my, parents, my parents got married because they got pregnant. Uh, they they. You know, they they got five kids through the marriage, and it's not working for them. They're not right. they're not made. So your mom doesn't want you to have kids. My mom, frankly, doesn't care, and I don't care very much. Wow. Well, that but, you you should take something from that and learn from it. I, I am. Oh, well. Uh, well, that's the next step, which is finding a relationship either that you know. No, no. Very, may, very maybe much. maybe if your mom hadn't gone through that, she'd be a lot happier today. Well, but then again, if she didn't, then I wouldn't be here. Uh, you you know? wouldn't uh, be here, but that's not the point. We're not talking about whether, whether your whether your kid is happy. We're talking about whether the parent is happy. Sure. And I think for them it didn't work, and for a lot of people it hasn't worked. I think I'm at a point, and I think, again, it's my opinion, it's my, you know, I'm at a point where I've pragmatically looked at this stuff and uh, found, for example, Tom Hanks on Castaway, he didn't want to be alone, or... What a lot of people, the end of the wild, by the end of the movie, he said, love is nothing if it's not shared. These are uh, movies. We, well, of course they're movies. They're, you know, you were pointing out television shows. They're, they're, they're ideals. They're, no, no, no. Movies. But what I'm, what I'm saying, yeah, though, yeah. is that, the, but I'm not using television shows to prove anything except that there are audiences for these kinds of things. Sure. I mean, they have audiences all... because we agree with it in some way. Right, the point is that shows that, could, that, whether it be rules of engagement today or How I Met Your Mother or Big Bang Theory or Two and a Half Men, shows feature guys who are not committed. Sure. Hanging out and being guys. That This is a new development. Yeah. And, no, and I, these I are shows, I'm these are shows when they have writers and they're not on strike. These are shows that have large audiences. I'm, it's not the shows that, that themselves that, that prove anything of the plots of the shows. The fact that there are large audiences for shows that depict that kind of, of lifestyle right. tell me that the lifestyle that you're describing is becoming a pterodactyl. It's, sure, it's going it, away. Yeah. It's, it's a dodo the, bird. It's the way of the cowboy, you know, the way that the train is coming and the cowboy is going, right? It's, that it's a new way of... I understand that. And uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that, pragmatically, again, I've looked at this and uh, I happen to agree with that there is some value in having family. I mean, can we agree with that, that, you know, some people, at least not everybody listening to your station... Uh, There's value in having family. I love having a brother. I love having uh, my, my nephew. I love having my sister-in-law. I love it. Uh, but but that, doesn't, that doesn't that doesn't mean more. that that there's value in a man signing a contract that guarantees well, cash to somebody if things don't work out. I, Those are two you know, separate things. In ter- yeah, in terms of you know, you know, marriage only exists as a reaffirmation to do that. You know, I mean, it does have its economic aspect, but a lot of no, no, like but that that, that, that is, but that is, you see, the thing is, we put meaning on it that isn't there. Uh, is there? With, the, the people who put out the paperwork that you have to fill out, they see it the way I see it. Right. It is a business venture. It is a yeah. corporation that is being formed by two individuals. It's an institution. It's a corporation. Okay. It's beyond an institution. It is a corporation. You know, when you form a corporation in the state of California, Alex, and I'm sure it's true in most other states. Right. Uh, you have to file paperwork for an LLC or for a corporation. And when you do, that paperwork goes to Sacramento, in our case in California, to the state capital. Right. And so, like, if, 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 when, you, when you form a corporation, that paperwork goes to Sacramento. And the Secretary of State's office places their raised seal on your corporate certificate that makes it official that you are now a corporation. Uh-huh. That exact same process exists for a marriage certificate. When you get married, the minister doesn't hand you a certificate. 
the minister has you fill out and sign all the material there, and then they take it from you, and they send it to Sacramento with the same Secretary of State places, the raised seal. Uh, you have formed a corporation. Right. That is how the state sees it. It's forming a corporation with two equal partners who own 50% of the enterprise. Right. That's what you've done. Sure. Uh, and you're adding I, sentimentality to it and meaning that the state had never intended. Well, I, well, I'm sorry to have this feeling or the sentimentality, but that's just what goes along with it, I feel. Well, it doesn't have to. And the bottom line is the, the more you disabuse yourself of the notion of sentimentality, the less likely it is you'll get hurt. Um, yeah, I haven't found that to be the case. and uh, You haven't gotten won't. married yet. Well, uh, well, again, I'm calling in to say that I would like to or that it's... But, uh, well, you know, it's because you haven't done it yet, because you are ignorant of the process, well, uh, because you lack experience in this area. You're, you're yeah. all, your own parents uh, were not happy married. Of course, because I don't feel that they were compatible with one another. They but had to stay together. To who stay together. is compatible? The point is, who wants to live with somebody else who's constantly going to be telling you how wrong you are, critiquing you, criticizing you, telling you the things you don't do, you don't take the garbage out, you don't pick up your socks, you don't do this, you don't do that? Who wants that? Appar you, apparently. Well, what, I, what I'm trying to get at is... Uh, like, this is for me again. That's um, the compatible people. I think I, found, I think I found that person that isn't that way. That I knew it. Way. Do you well, live with her? I lived with her for two years. She's currently in graduate school. Right, and, uh, but she's not her. married to you yet. No, not married yet. And when she gets married to you and she's got your signature on that contract, life will change, my friend. And and there's a <laughs> there's millions of men out there who will back me up on this. Well, let me let me at least say this. I, I've, I've come into the relationship where she is a stronger person. She is the more educated. She is the more... That's your uh, own fault. What? But I don't see how that's my fault. You can, be the, you can be the more educated. Make yourself the more educated one. Well, I'm so, I'm, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm at school right now. I'm studying. I'm in college, you know? I, I chose not to... So is to she older around. than you? No, she's exactly so, my same age. My so how, did you, how, how could she be more educated than you if you're the same age? She's more educated in the sense that she has more experience in school. Uh, that being, so that what were you doing graduate. all these years? You were not in school. No, no, no I've been, we're we're at exactly the same level. I'm still an undergraduate, and she is at graduate level. How did that happen? Before, uh, I didn't I didn't choose to go to graduate school. I chose to pick up an extra major to learn more about you know I, it's, it's sociology and history, and you know I like the, the history topic, and I'm still being educated. In that and what sense. were you planning on doing for a living based on that? Um, currently, you know, I've been really getting into giving back, uh, giving back to the community. Uh, I want to be a teacher right now, um, teaching in communities where I grew up. Something not very lucrative. No, I wouldn't say that at all. And again, this again would teaching be is story. lucrative. Uh, I said no. It would. I would Something would've. not very lucrative. I said. Yeah, I, agree? I agree with that. Okay. Uh, I, well, what I'm trying to say is that I stepped into the situation, and I'm still in the situation where she's the more dominant one. She has the more. She's going to have the more money. She's going to graduate school. She's going to have a better job, and uh, that not. So you want to marry her so she can subsidize your desire to take a less lucrative job? Uh, somewhat, yeah. I kind of like the feeling that I don't have to be the provider. I ha I feel that she could provide, and I could uh, really uh, give give to that, you know? I don't have to be the one that does it or feel that she has to nag Well, she could do that even if she doesn't marry you. Sure. I mean, I, I don't uh, I don't disagree with that at all. Um, so why do you need to get married? Uh, like I said, it's for me anyway, for a lot of people, actually, it's it's some sort of reaffirmation. You know, gay people, gay, hold on, gay people are pushing to get married. Pushing, well, pushing. well uh, gay people have as little experience as you do. Um, I well, yeah, I have question. said on the air many times I am a, 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 a full-fledged supporter of gays and lesbians getting married because I believe they have the right to be as miserable as anybody else. Yeah, um, but at the end of the day, I mean, you want us to disattach the meaning, but that's what it is to be human, to give meaning to things that don't have it. My thing is that we give meaning to marriage, and I think this is what the, what the reporter was Right, and you're, you, you, of course, are going to be the one who's in love, the one who is going to buck the odds, buck the trends. You're the one who's got a very special love that others can't understand. You're, uh, the two of you are just hand-in-hand, oh, hand, yeah. skipping through the daisies. You two understand it much better than any other two people on the history of planet Earth.
I mean, I don't think it's completely black and white like that, but I do feel we have something unique, something that should grow. Everyone feels they have something unique until they're heading to divorce court and then paying the lawyer. Well, do you really think that the people who get married all think they're just another number? Everybody thinks they've got the best uh, relationship, the best girlfriend, the most unique situation. Everyone else will fail, but not us, honey, because we're in love, real love. We understand love, unlike the other morons out there. We really get it. See, you're turning it around and you're thinking that I completely, you know... I think you believe that. Well, well I say You that just said you think you're really unique. Now, in what way are you unique? Well, I'm unique in, in that there's in no possible way someone exactly like me. I don't, I don't know. No, what... I'm talking about your relationship. What's unique about it? What's unique about that, it? You, that you have a girlfriend who 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 you she think is the best girlfriend in the whole world. That this is unique. Oh, she makes more money. That's not unique. Uh, well, it's unique in the sense of being popular. Of course, it's not. That's it's it's it, it may it may not be the median or the average, but it's you know, far from unique. Um, where we're going with this? Nor is your know. nor is your delusion that it's a special relationship that, that when you that. have some special ability to transcend the problems of marriage uh, better than all the other maroons out there. Well, I mean, that thing you have with your nephew or niece where you go visit them, there's something unique there, right? There's something no finds you guys. Again. It's not so, unique. It, <laughs> Uncles and nephews, there's plenty of uncles who enjoy hanging out with their nephews. Plenty of them. Okay. Well, back to my point, I do agree with what you were saying. I do think that there are other ways society does progress, and I think it is not. This is frustrating. I, I just think some people don't even know what the word unique means. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I don't trust anything that bleeds for a week and doesn't die. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Jacob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great. A couple couple of things I've been inspired to call for the first time um, by the caliber of the exchange you've been having with Kay. And uh, a, a few things. The, um, the discussion, she, she frequently referred to uh, studies, empirical studies, where it supported the notion that it's better to be married when you have kids. And I think that that's a, a good example of how to lie or mislead with statistics in that if you... You assume what the alternative for that is for the purpose of this discussion is to uh, not have um, uh, or is to to be married rather than to not be married. But really what, what you are talking about is staying with the woman if you want, uh, as long as it's necessary to, to raise the kids without signing a contract, which is outmoded and ancient and unnecessary these days. So, And I think you said you agreed with her, actually, that it's better for kids to... To have, the, to have the parents married, where for for children to, it's great, yes. But actually, I don't I don't even think it's better for children necessarily. You could use the the Goldie Hawn uh, Russell Crowe model, where you know you just stay together. That's not Russell Crowe. That's uh, <laughs> Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, excuse me. Um, so, uh, you know, I'd like you to comment about that. Uh, you know, given given that that that's an option, why sign a contract? How does that help the kids to sign a contract? I think uh, it benefits the kids because the kids uh, uh, know who their father is. Uh, they all have the same last name. They all know that mommy is not sleeping with a new uncle every week. And I think kids feel more secure that way. And I have read the statistics that she talks about regarding the stability of having that kind of home. And kids who come from a home where the parents are married are less likely to be criminals, less likely to be drug addicts or alcoholics, less likely to be teenage parents. And less these are facts. Than what, less likely than having an absentee parent. Less likely than if you have a single mother or if you have a, a, a kid as an orphan or in a foster home. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think what they're specifically referring to is an absentee parent alternative where, you know, let's say for typically the father would just be gone and, and as you implied, you know, would not be... The kids wouldn't even know the name, but that's not necessarily the alternative that somebody who's mindful of having children would would choose to have. Now, I'm in the demographic. I think that she's talking about, let's say, uh, a thirty-something uh, with an uh, you know perpetual adolescent. 
but I completely agree with, with um, everything that you advocate, and I don't think that it's necessary to get married. And even if I did choose to have children, which I may do, you know, when I'm, when I'm good and ready, but um, I definitely don't see an advantage to me to me to sign a contract specifically. I think I can have everything that a married couple could have, even if I stayed with the same woman forever, which, you know, at this point in my life, it's hard to imagine wanting to do that. But um, I, don't know, I don't know if I totally agree with you, Tom. I think you can, I just can kind of read between the lines of what you're saying. I don't think you totally are convinced that it's, uh, that it's better for... I'm convinced for it's better children. for children. I'm not convinced that it's better for the parents. I don't think uh, that men benefit in any way be from being married to, to the mother of their kids. It would be interesting to hear what Case thinks about that. She said, well, it's better for society. But is it? does she believe that it's better for men? She also pointed to something else that was interesting, that she said, well, the vast majority of men want to want to get married. And, you know, that's not something that I don't think you have ever argued. Or, or in fact, you probably wouldn't have a program if that, if that weren't true, because it would take a lot away um, from what you were trying to persuade people about. I totally agree that... Most men want to get married, but that's irrelevant to me. Oh, I, I, I agree with that too. If if she had lived during the um, during the Third Reich, and she said, "Well, most people, you know, want to kill Jews," well, so <laughs> that's not that's not relevant. Um, so the bottom line is, yes, people are people are weak, and they need they feel a need to get married. Um, that is that's no. Uh, that's, it doesn't. It doesn't persuade me at all of the benefits to me, to uh, for all the negatives and and just the the uh, what is it? Yes, almost fifty percent of people get divorced, and then I think something like five percent of married couples describe themselves as happy. So that leaves almost everybody who either is who is married either is going to get divorced or should get divorced. I mean, maybe that's a stretch, but um, it's kind of this crapshoot that you're betting your life. People who are very conservative tend to take this, um, and, and, you know, for granted, you know, because of, from the societal pressure that they should get married, or, you know, they don't question it very much. But um, it seems like it's a, it's a really bad choice. For most people, I'm just, I'm shocked that people... people I think it's uh, a bad choice. It. I think it's a bad choice for every man out there, and frankly, for many women as well. Likus. Tom Likus. So you're just looking for sex. Of course. You must be a new listener. You must be kidding. You think that's what makes people happy? That's what, I'll tell you what, that's what makes men happy. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. If you're just joining us, we are spending our program talking about a piece that was... Uh, Written for a publication called City Journal, called Child Man of the Promised Land, seems to describe our listeners. <laughs> Written by Kay Heimowitz. You can see this article for yourself. Go to blowmeuptom.com. It's linked there. Read it, then dial in. 1-800-5800-TOM. If you can't read it, if you're driving around, oh, you'll understand what's going on here. Liz on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I love your show. I listen to you every day. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say I'm listening to these people argue about going for marriage. And my parents were together for 15 years, and they got married. Three months later, divorced. Oh. They were done. So they, they were, were living together for how many years? 15 years. And they had four kids. We were already all, you know, I was already 15. And they got married in Vegas. Three months later, that was it. They were done. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and now that makes me feel like I don't want to get married either, you know. I I've, I've told my boyfriend, I've been we've been together for about 5 years and I'm just like I don't want to get married. Maybe later I'll change my mind, but I just don't feel like we should have to. You know, my parents were together for so long and basically marriage, you know, ruined their relationship. Yeah. Yeah, and then people argue, you know, you should get married for the kids for the kids, but I, from my experience, my parents had a better relationship when they weren't married. You know, after they got married is when all the drama started. Well, uh, I'm sure that's true because now they were locked into each other. Yep, very, very true. Okay, Tom, I'm just wanting to tell you I love your show, listen to you every day, and I love you. Thank you, darling. 
Bye-bye. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Right on, Tom. Hey, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for you, but I have to tell you that I I, I, I just take this lady's side on this. I think a lot of older men, or men my age, 42 or so, they want to be married with kids. I think that's what uh, they long for. Well, I don't know uh, necessarily that just because you want something doesn't mean it's what's good for you. I'm not saying that uh, the majority of them want that. You know, it's, it's... Or don't want that. I think it's a matter of opinion because generally I feel marriage, you know, it is stupid into it. I, well, the connection is terrible. I, I would like to get what you have to say, but I can't really hear it. It is uh, Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Doing great, man. You you are such a lifesaver, man. About a year ago, I was in the same predicament. I was with this girl for like three years straight, man. And she was talking about marriage, and I was like a simp at that time. And I was like, you know, hey, you know, I want to get married too. And my barber was cutting my hair one day, and I was telling him about it. He was like, man, listen to this dude, man. He's like my pastor. And I was like, are you serious? And Man, I turned on the station, and I was at a state of shock, man. I told her, it was like, look, you know, I'm feeling where we are right now. There's no point in getting married. You know, I don't have any kids. I'm 23. Got a good job. You know, I stay by myself, dude. It's like I don't need any kind of just any kind of bad luck. And I feel like cats are getting married right now. It's like they're paying for it. Then you get pregnant. You get your wife pregnant, and then it's like you got alimony and child support. That's right. It's, it's like, man, you just stuck. And it's like I've been telling the girls that I've been going out with, I'm like, look, you know, I'm not looking for anything serious, no commitment. It's just, you know, you do what you want to do, I do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. If I'm going out with another girl, I don't want you to call me and ask me who you out with or where you going or why you ain't calling me back. When me and you are together, we're together. When we're not together, just shut up. That's it. I love that. And it's like, man, I hear you. And it's like you said about the certain lifestyle that you live. And I was like, man, that's a pretty good lifestyle. And it's like... You know, I go out to different clubs and I meet different women. And, you know, hey, if I'm feeling the moment, I'll bring them back to the house and do what I got to do. And, hey, I feel them on their way. No breakfast. That's right. And, man, I just want to say uh, just to all the guys out there, man, if y'all think about getting married, man, just don't do it, man. It saves you a whole lot of money and frustration. And plus, you live longer, man. Uh, well, I, I, I happen to believe that regardless of what everybody else is saying. Billy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. I, uh, I have been listening to you since I was 14, just putting skateboards together in the garage. You are the man. Um, about that same time, I thought everything in my parents' house was going well um, until I was 22. Or I was 20. My sister was 18. As soon as she got out of the house, my parents got divorced. And then everything started to come out about how my dad had, like, over a million dollars in gambling debt and now, well, my parents didn't actually get divorced. They got separated because my mom doesn't want to get divorced because once they split up, that gambling debt of over a million dollars, she inherits that. So, I mean, it makes me feel bad that my mom's life is basically ruined for now because the only reason they stayed together was for us. And I had no idea the whole time. Neither my sister had no idea anything was wrong. I thought, I mean, just like you say, I thought they were the unique situation. And Everybody thinks they are a unique situation. <laughs> Tom, I had a girlfriend for four years, uh, first coming into college, and uh, I ruined my whole first four years of college, and I thought I knew more than you, but I didn't. There we go, Billy. Thank you for that. one 800 800 tom Jay on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Jay. Hey, uh, I'd just like to say that I think it shows far more responsibility for a guy to grow up and get a little older by saying no and not going out and blowing his money and and knocking some gal up and winding up in a stuck situation than it does to go ahead and give in to whatever people deem as an incredible way to grow up and get married at a younger age and, and having children. And uh, I, I think it sets them up later in life should they ever decide to, to do that. Yeah, um, and I think, and I think Kay's got it all wrong. I think she's talking; she's the one talking to the niche, um, because these gals have created this situation for themselves in a lot of fashion. You know, by by becoming the the 
the uh, gold digging type, and I've seen it. I've seen it many, many times. So, anyway, love your show. Keep it up. Thank you. Appreciate right. the call. Sophia on the Tom Likas show. Hello. All right. Here's a situation for you. Uh, I got married way too young at 18. My husband was 19. Um, we've been married for this year will be 18 years. Uh, we had our first child six years in. We decided we are going to wait because we had a kind of rough start. And um, it didn't get any better after we had our son. And then we just decided that instead of divorcing or whatever, we would try and stick it out until the kids were 18 and then inadvertently had another one four years in. So that's my story. So how long do you have to go? Uh, my daughter's seven. Eleven more years. Uh-huh. And which is not so bad for him because he's had sex every day for 17 years except for the few times I go on vacation. And... Um, I do everything for him, everything. But you're not happy. Oh, God, no. <laughs> and I don't hide it either. It's the worst thing. <laughs> and have you gotten it anywhere else while he was out of town or you were out of town? No. No? No. The, the thing is, when you're having sex once and twice a day every day for 17 years, you kind of get a little, I don't know. It's not that special. <laughs> oh, listen to you. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you for that. Jim on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, Jim. Yeah, I just want to say, you know, I believe in love and marriage. I'm 29, and I still hold on to that. And I think uh, that lady that just you're just talking to hit it right on the head. It, it does all come down to sex, really, and how you view sex, I believe. And, and that's going to be how you view marriage as well. But she's miserable. Well, she's I given her husband think, everything he needs, but she's miserable. I know she's miserable. That's unfortunate, the world we live in. I think it starts when you're very young. I mean, the way I grew up viewing sex is that it's the ultimate expression of love, and I do believe in love. And so, Tom, I'm I'm holding out for that special person that I find that I want to marry, and and I'm, I'm going to do that. You know? Are you having sex in the meantime? No, nope, not having sex. Are you a virgin? No, nope, not a virgin. Actually, Tom, I was uh, actually married uh, when I was 23 for about six months. It was a huge mistake. Uh, at that time, I knew it was a mistake. So you haven't had sex since you were married? Nope. Really? Haven't. Come on. You don't have any friends like that, do you? I have I have quite a few friends like that, Tom, but, uh, it, you know, it's... You have, you have quite a few friends who aren't having sex. Right. I do also have a lot of married friends, too, and they have good relationships. You know, they, uh, I think also, I think uh, it depends on also, you really have to make a decision that you're going to want to make a commitment to this person for life, and you want to stick with them through thick and thin. You want to take care of them, and, uh, you know, for better or for worse. I mean, that's a decision you have to make. and it, Well, everybody uh, takes that vow before they uh, get married. And then, uh, as you see, almost 50% of the people who get married get divorced. I know. It's it's a tough statistic. You uh, did it yourself. Exactly. I think, uh, you know, I don't know what to say about that. I guess, you know, it's a chance you have to take. No, uh, you don't have I, to I take do. it. But you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to. I guess deep down inside, I feel like that's where I'm going to be the most satisfied and content is by... What if you don't meet anybody? Well, I guess I'm just going to have to uh, take that risk. You know, I think right now I'm... So you'd be willing to go to your grave and never have sex again? Yeah, I think I would because what I've made the decision is that I was going to give myself to other people and... You know, if I go out and I just try to have as much sex as I can with as many girls as I can, I, I would feel like, you know, I'm just trying to satisfy myself. As, and uh, yeah, that's how I would feel, too. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show.